Hi, my name is Dr. Wickoff. And I'm John Waller de la Rosa. We're from the Cardiac Arrest Task Force, and we're going to walk you through um, the protective code blue. What makes this different than other cardiac arrest resuscitations is one, we must take, prioritize protecting ourselves and donning the appropriate PPE for the aerosol generating procedures that we'll have to perform. Um, and additionally, it's minimizing the number of people in the room, with really three being our maximum number. So we're going to start off walking you through some of our equipment and gear, and then we're going to move into running some mock code so you can see how this will play out. So first we're going to walk through some of our carts and equipment that's different. Around the department you'll find PPE assorted in a variety of areas, but when in doubt there is a standard PPE cart. On the top you will have gloves, small, medium, and large, extra large. Within the cart you should have face shields, goggles, N95s a variety of sizes, and surgical masks. There should also be gowns. Together these are the items that make up your PPE. Please refer to the departmental PPE video for how to properly don and doff the PPE. Next, it will find our procedure cart. This is a general procedure cart that will remain outside the room for patients that are coming in with possible COVID. So on the side of the cart, you'll find our BVNs lined up. On the top, you'll find our normal typical airway box that we use. Walking through each drawer, you'll find what you need. So the top has chlorhexidines, caps, gauze, sterile flushes, extra tegoderms. Second drawer has central lines for your use. Micropuncture kits for those difficult lines. Third drawer is your A-line drawer. It has everything you need for A-lines, a 20 gauge, and an 18 gauge if you need a larger one. It has some uh, arrows and additionally the tubing and everything the nurses will need to start an A-line. Last drawer has your chest tube kits, your Chlorovax, in case your patient has a pneumo. Side drawers, sterile gloves, sterile ultrasound probe covers, supplies for your OG tube, and this is a special bag that we're going to have. This is what we call our protected code blue bag. This is all the small items you'll need to run your code so you can minimize going in and out of the room. So let's walk through what you'll find inside. So first you have your drape, which will go over the patient, plastic drape, some generic, just regular flushes for flushing your IO, a scalpel, Peat valve, some extra gauze, clamp, end title with tubing, non rebreather, and a viral filter. We'll walk over to some of the rest of the gear and with Dr. Waller. Everything else is relatively standard. You know, we have our typical code cart, our life pack. We'll be using video laryngoscopy for endotracheal intubation, so you'll only have your glide scope available. Um, and then this is a new addition, will be the Lucas 3 uh, for a automated chest compression device. And that will help us also further minimize the number of people in the room, so this can offload the work of chest compressions. So you identify a patient that is now pulseless and in cardiac arrest. Your next instinct is going to be to start manual chest compressions. But this is where this kind of a cardiac arrest differs from our typical management because our concern is that manual chest compressions can potentially aerosolize viral particles. So you need full PPE on and the patient draped before you can initiate chest compressions. One thing you can do is place a non-rebreather on. Hey. 15 liters per minute. The goal is not to go above 15 liters per minute because of concerns that that high oxygen flow rate can also aerosolize particles. Then you move out of the room and don your full airborne PPE and get a drape and the protected code blue bag prior to starting chest compressions. So then you have all of your PPE on. You grab your protected code blue bag. Into the room. Cover their face with this. And then you can begin compression. 
So once again, we're gonna minimize the number of people inside the room. So we already have the nurse inside the room doing chest compressions. So outside the room, our attending physician, Dr. Waller, has gone and gowned up. He's bringing that Lucas device in, setting it aside. Someone from outside the room is gonna hand him this Lucas to go with that life pack. Here you go, Dr. Waller. Thank you. He's next gonna be joined by his respiratory therapist, which I will be playing the role of. I'm gonna grab two things. I'm gonna get our airway box. ET tube, no. Slide scope. Come inside the room. Now we have all three personnel in the room. We have our attending physician who has switched out with our nurse as she's tired out on CPR. We have our nurse and we have myself, the respiratory therapist. So as he's doing chest compressions, she's going ahead and connecting the patient to the life pack. We're gonna check next for a shockable rhythm. While she's connecting the patient to the life pack, myself as the RT will be getting the airway supplies ready. Okay. Let's go ahead and pause and check for a shockable rhythm. Rhythm check? Not a shockable rhythm. We don't have a pulse. Next, we're gonna get the patient on the Lucas device. As a two-man technique, we're gonna roll the patient. Backboard inserted. Patient flat. Lift up plastic. Exposing the chest. We're connected. Power on. Suction device has been lowered to the level of the chest. Now we can start the continuous chest compressions. Compressions going. Next, we're gonna place an IO. As he's placing the IO, myself as the respiratory therapist is getting his airway kit ready for him. Next step will be to intubate him. IO flushes. We now have an IO ready. The nurse can administer epinephrine as indicated per normal ACLS protocol. We have our glide scope. We need an ET tube. I have one right here. Perfect. Next we have our BBM. You'll notice that we have pre-connected the viral filter, the end title, and the peak valve. There will be no bagging until this whole circuit is connected. Underneath the plastic, he will intubate the patient. We will pause chest compressions when he's ready. I'm ready. Chest compressions pause. ET tube? We'll hand him the ET tube. ET tube is in, balloon is up. Go ahead and connect. He's now connected, balloon is full up. circuit. We will resume chest compressions. Now we will bag the patient, watching for our waveform capnography. Confirmed, you are in. Confirmed. We'll now begin, I will continue bagging as the respiratory therapist. Our attending physician will now move to the head of the bed. He will take over running the code. Outside the room is the timekeeper and the runner. He will ask for additional medication supplies as needed. Our nurse is applying medications per ACLS protocol. So that's how you run a cardiac arrest that occurs within the emergency department. This is for all cardiac arrests that occur within the emergency department. So the two main takeaways are full PPE to protect ourselves from aerosolized viral particles, and then additionally minimize the number of people in the room. So we're trying to do everything with just three people, a nurse, a physician, and an RT. We appreciate all of your hard work. Protocols will change over time. We will continue to update you as things change. We're gonna go over how to perform a cardiac arrest that occurs out of the hospital and is brought into the emergency department. So when EMS arrives at the door, when they get to the door, they're going to stop compressions and stop bagging. They will then quickly roll the patient to the room. Inside the room, the respiratory therapist, the MD, and the nurse will be waiting to receive the patient. Do we have a viral filter on? No, it doesn't look like we have a viral filter. So the MD will then clamp the LMA or the endotracheal tube to prevent air from coming out of the endotracheal or, endo, uh, or LMA. He will then attach his LMA to his BVM and attach that. He can then unclamp and now we have a closed circuit. Now that we have a closed circuit, we can then throw our plastic drape on the patient like before and begin CPR being bagging and following our normal ED process.
We're going to go over what to do when they bring you a patient with no endotracheal tube and no LMA present. In this case, we just have a BVM with a face mask. So once again, when the patient gets to the triage desk, we're not going to do CPR, we're not going to bag the patient, and we're going to roll quickly to the room. We've got a cardiac arrest here. No airway? No airway. So first things first, Dr. Waller is going to put a non-rebreather on the patient. He's then going to throw the tarp over the patient like the other protocol. We're then going to verify that, that everyone in the room has appropriate PPE. If they do, we will then start chest compressions and go down our normal pathway. So that's overall our protected code blue pathway in video format. There's also a written format. Thank you. Thank everyone that was involved in the creation of this pathway. It's a dynamic sort of a uh, process, and so we're open to feedback. And I'm sure there will be changes as sort of the situations evolve. So there are a few resources we need you to review in conjunction with the video. So the first one is the PPE video that Dr. Bhandari created with the PPE team and Eddie and everyone else. Please review that for proper donning and doffing of PPE. The next thing that I need you to review is the Lucas video. This goes, it's about five minutes. We'll send out that link and that goes over the proper way to apply a Lucas by the manufacturer. The next two things I need you to review is our intubation protocol that the department has. It goes through how you're supposed to do the airway appropriately in a protected situation for safety you and the patient. That will also be sent out one more time. And like Dr. Waller said, please review the paper form of the protected code blue format that we sent out. Now, Expect that at shift change, both for nursing and physicians, that we will go over this. We know it's new, and we're going to help you guys and work you through it. Additionally, expect us to have a few mock code blues in the department when the department isn't that busy. So that's coming. Thank you all for watching.